Hello, Driving Intelligence community. Abe and I are on our way to visit his grandparents, and uh, we're going to look at a dryer. This is gonna be a don't replace it, fix it video. Uh, this dryer is at least over 14 or 15 years old. And based on what I'm being told by my parents, it's probably just a heater element that's bad. But we're gonna do some diagnosis and see if this is a salvageable dryer, at least until a new one's bought. Stay tuned. Before I get into this video, I want to uh, point out that uh, at the end of this video I do something that um, I don't recommend. It did confirm what the problem was for me. I have experience with electricity um, and uh, I also did my research. So I made sure that I wasn't going to get hurt or nobody else was. But I wanted to go through a little bit of what I had to do to, to figure this problem out. Now I assumed it was the heating coil. You're going to find out that it was not the heating coil. I had to go further into the machine to figure out what the problem was. There are thermostats, um, and then there's also thermal fuses, and that's what I'm holding here. And I'm going to show in the video, you'll see that this was the problem. Now, what I did in order to test this was to go online and uh, I put the, the part number. There's a part number that's imprinted on this, and you can uh, do some checking to figure out what this is. So, because I knew it was a thermal switch, and I also determined that this is supposed to have continuity, which means that the wire, for example, complete continuity is two wires together. When you break continuity, you're breaking the wire connection. This thermal fuse, when it gets hot, breaks the connection, which says that there's a problem, that your, uh, your dryer is overheating. Um, so that's one thing that I did to check this. It's the same process with the thermostats. Uh, the thermostats actually, call, my understanding is the thermostats will turn the dryer on, the, the, the heating elements on, turn them off on off when it hits certain temperatures. So, uh, but this is a protective device. You'll see later on that uh, as this was the problem and the fact that uh, I wanted to be 100% sure that this was the problem, I took a, a step that is not necessarily the safest thing to do. So I don't recommend you doing that yourself. Uh, these are cheap. I think this ended up being about 10 or $12 delivered from Amazon and actually you get this uh, thermal fuse plus another thermostat. So. For 12 bucks, you got half of those uh, components that are in this, uh, this dryer to be replaced. So if another one fails, you can, you can absolutely replace it. But uh, p please be cautious. There's a lot of voltage here. When you take the back off that, uh, that dryer, you're exposing 220 volts. Make sure it's not plugged in. This video is for information. Hopefully, it'll give you some ideas about what you can do, especially if you want to uh, engage with a, uh, uh, an appliance repair shop. To get, uh, to get them to help you out. At least you have some knowledge on what steps uh, they're going to take in order to resolve your problem. I checked the operation of this dryer, turned it on. It definitely does not get hot, but there's no other problem. It operates normally. The, uh, the drum is turning properly. I've started taking this apart. This is where the three phase comes in from the 220. I'm going to take this back panel off. The first thing I want to check is to see if the uh, if the heater element is is uh, burnt. In my past, I've had one of these dryers before, a dryer like this, and the heater element goes after a period of time, so I'm thinking that it's probably uh, burnt through and separated, but let's check it out. I've taken the back off the dryer, which exposes some of the electronics. I mean, your controls are up here. This is your three-phase connection. This is your heater element. I need to expose that to see what's going on. And then that's your ductwork coming out of the drum, which is here, that uh, exhausts this through the house. I'm going to take this apart to see if there's something wrong with the heater element. I removed the heating element. You can see here the coils that get hot. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is check continuity with a, a multimeter to see if there's a break in that. Hopefully that's the simple problem. Here are the contacts for the coil. It's one long coil, and I need to check the continuity here, so I'm gonna hook the meter. Let's test it first. All right, the meter's working. Now we're gonna hook up for continuity, and the easy fix is not gonna, not gonna be the one that we need to take care of. These coils are in good condition. You can see I've got uh, no resistance, so the coils are good. 
So I need to check other elements. I don't know about these, uh, I don't know what these are, thermocouples. I need to figure that out. That's something I'm gonna have to research. So I've checked the coils and I've also checked this thermostat. They're testing good. Got continuity on both. I'm gonna reinstall it and test this other thermostat and move on from there. After testing everything from here down, these are all the wear parts or things that uh, see a lot of extreme heat. I tested the two thermostats, tested this thermal fuse here, tested the coil, removed the coil, did all the cleaning. Finally got to this thermal fuse, didn't test well. This one did not show continuity. So this is the problem, need to order a new one. There's some comparable parts I can get through Amazon. I'll link it below. Once we get that in, we'll put it back together and uh, we'll test this machine out. It does look very good. There's no rust, no corrosion. So I'm not concerned about there being a special problem that causes fuse to go. I'm just hoping that this is due to age. Uh, but if it does blow again, there's a bigger issue and uh, probably should uh, think about getting a new dryer. So I came up with an idea to test this to make sure that that thermal switch was in fact a problem. But this is highly dangerous. I'm not recommending you do this at home. I'm doing it because I thought I could uh, take a, uh, a protected risk. But the thermal switch provides continuity in the back. It goes right there. This is where the heat comes up from the coils from this section here. And what I did is I put those two wires together. The thermal switch is supposed to have continuity, which means a closed circuit until it gets to the, the temperature where it breaks continuity and it turns off the heat. I've plugged it in. I'm going to turn the dryer on now, only temporarily to see if this dryer generates heat from the coils. I'll feel it coming out of here. And if uh, that thermal switch was the only problem, I should get plenty of heat coming out. So let's test it out. All right, now it's running. I'm feeling it and I'm getting hot air. So this confirms that the thermal switch was the problem. I'm getting plenty of hot air out of this. The dryer is working again, but I need to buy a thermal switch, install it. I would never, first of all, I don't recommend you doing what I'm doing, but second, I would not use a dryer without a thermal switch in it to protect you, your house, your family, your pets, everything. But at least I know now what the problem was with this dryer and it can be easily fixed for just a few bucks. I'm going to link the thermal switch below and uh, we'll be done with this. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me that thumbs up if this helped. Please be safe. This is highly dangerous, 220 volts. I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.